Okay, let's go back to my colleague Shrishti, who's also bringing us updates and information about the movement of Chandrayaan 3. Shrishti, can you tell us, can you tell our audiences why it is so important that the Vikram lander land on the surface of the moon? Tell us what experiments the Vikram lander is hoping to carry out. We know there are three scientific payloads on board. What are the different sets of experiments ISRO is hoping it will be able to conduct? So, apart from the uh, successful demonstration of the technology to softly land on the lunar surface, there are a lot of scientific experiments which have been planned. Uh, like the key mission again is to find more evidence of water molecules trapped in this uh, permanently shadowed region of the of the lunar surface, which will build on the previous findings of uh, Chandrayaan One as well. Uh, what is a critical resource? But apart from that, uh, the mission will look at uh, will look to understand uh, what is the composition of the lunar soil. So it's not really basically called soil; it's called the regolith. So scientists are very keen to understand what is the composition of the soil because there are a lot of critical elements which are trapped in this, uh, which can pave way for maybe uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mining in future uh, as resources. Apart from that, the uh, rover which is going to roll out of the lander will also insert a probe into this regolith to understand the seismicity, uh, to understand the uh, you know the properties of this regolith. And uh, it will also use uh, spectrometry, it will also use lasers to conduct all these experiments. So understand that uh, moon is a, is a bigger mystery. Even though it's the closest to the earth, there is a lot of questions that uh, still, uh, you know, that the scientists are still intrigued by. Also, it's important to understand that uh, moon has a very weak atmosphere. So uh, all the things that are on the moon have relatively remained unchanged over hundreds of years. So it has a lot of questions, you know, there are, there are a lot of mysteries trapped in it, which can pave way for more un uh, for understanding as to how the entire space has developed and, you know, uh, help us understand, unlock a lot of mysteries. So, so apart from the scientific discoveries and the technological demonstration, the moon ha is, a, is a very critical component of, for any nation looking to advance its uh, scientific uh, achievements in, okay. in space. Srishti, if I can ask you to stay with us, let's go back to P.K. Ghosh. He's a space strategist who remains with us. Mr. Ghosh, while you were bringing our audience an answer a little while earlier, you touched on the importance and the mystery that surrounds the lunar south pole. Can you just, in, an, in very rudimentary terms, explain to our audiences why the lunar south pole is so important, why it's so special? And if you could also tell us what Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan 1 also, had to do with the discovery and the exploration of the lunar south pole so far. Okay. Um, firstly, most of the landings earlier uh, that, is, that have taken place on the moon were on a band up and down the lunar equator because it was easier to land over there and that is why most of the uh, uh, most of the spacecrafts landed there nobody gave much importance to south pole then it was discovered you see what happens is on the surface of the moon the shadow areas have got a very cold temperature and the ones which come under the sun are very hot and of course in the night the uh, temperatures are much much lesser and in the daytime much higher so we thought our oh, Chandrayaan what did it do Chandrayaan 1 it said that look there is water molecules present in and around this area. Now everybody was surprised. What has happened is, and what we presume is, that in the areas, certain areas, there are big craters in the uh, uh, South Pole, like the Atkins crater, huge crater. Now there are areas which are perpetually in the shadows, where the temperature is exceedingly low. So what may have happened is, that the water molecules would have turned to ice and that ice is present in some form in these areas which are always in the dark and hence in low temperature. So 
what we are trying to find is, or other most countries now, including uh, the Russians and the Chinese, are trying to say is, like, look, let us land in the South Pole and see if there is water on uh, uh, on the surface of the moon. So, of course, I must also say, I don't think when they say that uh, there is water, I'm not too sure whether you'll find a frozen sea or not, or huge um, ice platforms or not. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, that's for uh, our rover to find out. But uh, there will be probably pockets where there will be ice. And this is my uh, hypothesis. It, it, it awaits, uh, of course, confirmation by Chandrayaan-3 and the other space crafts. Okay, Mr. Ghosh, stay with us because I, I want to ask you so much more about that. Let me just go back to our colleague Shrishti who's with us right now. Shrishti, we've talked right now about why the Lunar South Pole is so exciting. Can you now walk our audiences through Chandrayaan 2? Because much has been said while we're talking about Chandrayaan 3, much has been said about Chandrayaan 2 and what went wrong in 2019. I know that the ISRO chief gave three primary reasons. Can you just tell our audiences what those three reasons were? And then can you also tell us how ISRO aimed to attack each of those reasons this time with Chandrayaan 3? Uh, right. So, even though we could not uh, attempt a successful soft landing through Chandrayaan 2, a Chandrayaan 2 mission was proved, uh, proved to be uh, very beneficial for planning the third mission. Why? Because right as the ISRO chairman had earlier pointed out that the orbiter, which was part of Chandrayaan 2, had captured a lot of images. It kept on observing the lunar, at, uh, lunar surface, which helped us to narrow down a site near the south pole of the, uh, of the moon for the landing of Chandrayaan-3. So the images proved to be very helpful. It's, uh, the orbiter continues to circle around the moon and uh, collect a lot of data, which is uh, which is, uh, the scientists are still mining out and they are helping uh, the plan the third stage of the mission, which is uh, currently on. Uh, what went wrong? Uh, there were so, like uh, Mr. Ghosh was earlier pointing out, the 15 minutes of terror. So the entire mission had gone uh, completely as planned. It's just the last 15 minutes when things went awry. If you remember, uh, when the final descent phase began, uh, the lander, which was supposed to go down with a certain velocity, the velocity uh, there was a higher thrust to it, and the lander began uh, rotating at a very high speed. Uh, uh, ISRO chairman had earlier told News 18 that the landing site, uh, the uh, rover, uh, the lander basically fell short by half a kilometer when it was supposed to land and in order to cover that distance the velocity uh, suddenly increased so all those things are trying uh, isro has tried to uh, correct all those uh, uh, situations in this time and isro chairman had earlier told us that you know this time uh, the uh, the scientists have prepared a failure based design they uh, looked at all the kind of situations that can go wrong and then try to correct it uh, by uh, uh, adding more sensors to it, by adding more uh, hazard detection system to it, increasing the area of the landing uh, site, then adding more solar panels to it. So in case it has to travel and they, they have also chosen an alternate landing site as well in case uh, something like that happens. So all the emergency situations have been considered uh, weighed against and then the final uh, mission has been planned. 